Is China selling Russia weapons? China is trying to portray itself as a peacemaker, but might only be offering death. Welcome to American Covered. I'm Chris Chappell. You know, funding this show isn't easy. YouTube isn't exactly kind with ad revenue. Things are always tight, so if you like our brand of nonpartisan news coverage, please consider supporting American Covered on Patreon. All it takes is a dollar an episode. You can also set a monthly limit if that's too much. For a long time, the Chinese Communist Party has presented itself as a peace negotiator. Take the six party talks, for example. China moderated international talks about North Korea's nuclear program. Although the six-party talks failed, China positioned itself as an essential partner that North and South Korea need for peace, all while secretly backing North Korea. Saying you need China for peace is like saying you need fried Oreos as part of a healthy diet for your diabetic hamster. And yet, China wants to play the role of essential mediator for other countries as well. For example, more recently, China brokered an agreement between Saudi Arabia and Iran. We'll see how that pans out in the long run, but the Chinese Communist Party is not doing this out of the kindness of its heart. It would rather have Middle Eastern countries focus more on pumping oil for China than fighting amongst themselves. If for some reason China thought Saudi Arabians and Iranians killing each other would somehow lead to more oil, They'd send each side a nuke and a bunch of empty barrels, you know, out of the kindness of their heart. Now, China's setting itself up to be a neutral peacemaker between Russia and Ukraine. This is despite China and Russia both repeatedly saying they have a no-limits friendship. By the way, if someone says they want a no-limits relationship with you, make sure you have a safe word. I'm guessing Putin's safe word is table. Chinese state-run media also actively encourages, to this day, pro-Russian disinformation making Ukraine out to be the attacker who deserves destruction. But don't worry, China says it'll definitely be fair with Ukraine. After all, the ideal situation would be for both Russia and Ukraine to stop fighting and just give China what it wants. Taiwan. Yeah, I mean peace. China says it wants peace. The Chinese Communist Party says it's impartial, but it's pretty obvious which side it leans towards. Last month, the Chinese regime published a 12-point position paper on what it calls the Ukraine crisis. It's been called China's peace plan in the media, but it's not really a plan. And it's not really about peace either. The points were incredibly vague. Things like ceasing hostilities or reducing strategic risks. Who needs to cease hostilities? What kind of strategic risks? There are no tangible steps towards peace. In fact, they stay far away from even hinting that Russia's at fault or that its forces need to withdraw from Ukraine. Instead, the document pokes at the U.S. and NATO for having a Cold War mentality and imposing sanctions. And several points are about what would be economically helpful to China, like keeping supply chains stable and facilitating grain exports. China is doing a lot of business with Russia right now, and they get a lot of their grain from Ukraine. This is like a couple's counselor telling a couple all they need to stop fighting is to live, laugh, and love, and not to trust those Western capitalist pigs. It's not just China's peace plan that's raising red flags, though. Last month, the U.S. warned China not to supply weapons to Russia. That's after the U.S. gathered multiple threads of intelligence that China was considering giving lethal aid, like ammunition and artillery, to Russia. The Chinese Communist Party denied it and accused the U.S. of disinformation. I mean, do these guys look like one is going to sell artillery to the other? Speaking of Russia and China's no-limits friendship, this week, Chinese leader Xi Jinping is meeting Russian leader Vladimir Putin in Moscow in his first visit to Russia since the invasion. According to the Kremlin, they'll work on signing a number of important bilateral documents to further their no-limits relations. Don't worry, though, Ukraine won't be left out. Xi Jinping will also speak with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky afterwards, for the first time since the war broke out. The White House hailed this as an opportunity for China to see Ukraine's perspective. Of course, that meeting will be just a call, though. 
what, have you seen the state of Kiev? Do you really think Xi Jinping wants to meet Zelensky in person there? I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't even a FaceTime call. No need for Xi to have to see such a mess that totally wasn't Russia's fault. Zelensky says he wants to discuss China's peace proposals. But what it's really about is trying to ensure that China doesn't supply weapons to Russia. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. Ever since Russia invaded Ukraine last year, the Chinese regime and its proxies have tried to portray China as an important third-party mediator. Although I'm not sure how good of a mediator you are if one side's conversation with you is, hey, can you stop giving them stuff they're going to use to murder me? Sounds like that mediator wouldn't have the best Yelp reviews. The New York Times, for example, published an op-ed by the Center for China and Globalization, a Chinese think tank with ties to the United Front Work Department. The United Front Work Department is the division of the Chinese Communist Party that's responsible for getting everyone on China's side. It argued that China is uniquely positioned to act as a neutral mediator between a Western-supported Ukraine and Russia. Then, the Washington Post published an op-ed co-authored by a China-based investment firm. I'm sensing a pattern here. That op-ed compared Xi Jinping to U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, saying that if Xi can take the lead to make peace in Ukraine, it would certainly be a mighty good thing for the world. Sure, the Chinese Communist Party could take the lead to make peace, but that doesn't mean they're gonna. A hyena could also go vegan and join an interpretive dance troupe, but I wouldn't bet on it. More recently, Politico published an op-ed by a fellow at the Eurasia Group Foundation that argued for cooperation between the U.S. and China to end the war in Ukraine. The gist of it is that Chinese diplomacy in Ukraine would benefit U.S. interests and that the U.S. shouldn't be so allergic to it just because China's a competitive authoritarian regime. If China can actually help Ukraine reach mutually acceptable terms with Russia, surely the U.S. can muster the humility to permit its main geopolitical rival a diplomatic victory. After all, true diplomacy requires working with competitors, not just friends. In Ukraine, China's win need not be America's loss. So pretty much, the idea is that the world should rely on China to mediate with Ukraine, just like with North Korea. Come on, America, grab a kale smoothie and some comfy shoes, and tango with that vegan dancing hyena. What could go wrong? I'll tell you what could go wrong after the break. Welcome back. China is positioning itself as a neutral mediator who can help Russia and Ukraine come to terms. And there are some who believe it, or at least claim to believe it. However, there are those who are more skeptical, and for good reasons, too. The EU and NATO, for example. NATO Secretary Jen Stoltenberg said China doesn't have much credibility because they have not been able to condemn the illegal invasion of Ukraine. He's right, but that sentence also could have just ended after, China doesn't have much credibility. Say no more, chap. Meanwhile, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said that China had already taken a side in the conflict. Even German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who really wants to keep economic ties with China, says we should have no illusions about China. They have, up until now, not taken a stand against Russia. Ukraine letting China mediate would be like going to couples counseling where the counselor is your significant other's business partner and best friend with no limits. In truth, though, China's doing a lot more than just not taking a stand against Russia. China has been helping Russia. Some of that help is indirect. For example, China has been buying a ton of oil, giving Russia the resources to fund its campaign against Ukraine. There's also China's non-lethal military aid. According to sources familiar with U.S. and European intelligence, this includes items like flak jackets and helmets, but stops short of the more robust military assistance that Russia has requested. But it is possible that China is offering some more direct military aid. Like I said earlier, the U.S. is trying to warn China to not sell weapons to Russia. U.S. officials are hoping that by just publishing this information, it will deter the Chinese Communist Party from actually selling those weapons. But is it too late? Is China already selling weapons to Russia? The facts are a bit hard to confirm. The CIA has confirmed the possibility of Chinese lethal aid to Russia. 
and U.S. officials say that China is considering sending Russia artillery shells. But there are also reports that indicate that China is already offering military aid to Russia, especially through dual-use aid, things that can serve both civilian and military purposes. What, like windows? Because as we all know, there's nothing more lethal in Russia than an open high-story window. Okay, not windows. Drones. Since the beginning of the invasion, media reports sounded the alarm on Chinese drones. Especially those made by DJI, which has been sanctioned by the U.S. for their role in suppressing Uyghurs in Xinjiang. The Chinese drones have reportedly been used by the Wagner Group, also known as Putin's Shadow Army, and GRU, Russia's military intelligence directorate. They've been used in Ukraine and abroad to gather information, all while giving China crucial battle intelligence to help China be prepared for war. There's the Chinese Communist Party acting out of the kindness of its heart again. China is also helping Russia with satellite imaging, which helps Russian forces conduct operations. So essentially, China is doing everything it can to help Russia spy. This is like a referee saying they're impartial, but constantly showing one team the other team's playbook while telling them not to trust those Western capitalist pigs. Changsha Tianyi Space Science and Technology Research Institute, also known as Spacity China, has been sanctioned for supplying the Wagner Group with satellite imagery. But there are reports that Chinese assistance could be a lot more lethal. German news outlet Der Spiegel reported that China is negotiating with Russia to supply kamikaze drones. Yes, kamikaze drones, you know that. Classic mediation tactic? I thought Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's divorce was brutal. Der Spiegel claims that Chinese drone manufacturer Xi'an Bingo agreed to manufacture and test 100 ZT-180 prototype drones before delivering them to the Russian Defense Ministry by next month. Each would be capable of carrying a 35 to 50 kilogram warhead. It's also reported that the Chinese company would deliver components and know-how to Russia so that the country can eventually produce around 100 drones a month of its own. Well, it's just like that old proverb, give a man a drone and he can kill for a day. Teach a man how to make drones and try and hide your involvement as the man commits war crimes for life. There are also reports that China will deliver replacement parts for Russia's Su-27 jet fighters and other models all while falsifying shipping documents to make military parts look like replacements for civilian aviation. Now, U.S. officials say they haven't actually seen China provide lethal aid yet, but they also say that China hasn't taken it off the table. And a recent report by Politico indicates that China has been shipping assault weapons and body armor to Russia. Of course, it's the assault rifles that are really raising eyebrows. According to data from a customs data aggregator called Import Genius, a thousand Chinese knockoffs of the M16, called the CQA, were sent from China to Russia between June and December last year alone. Well, if it was between June and December, then maybe it wasn't for war and just Father's Day and Christmas presents. Because what says, I appreciate your work as a father and holiday spirit more than knockoff assault rifles. They were sent by China North Industries Group Corporation Limited, one of China's largest state-owned defense contractors, to the Russian company Tekrum, which has connections to the Russian military. According to Politico, Russian entities also received 12 shipments of drone parts by Chinese companies and over 12 tons of Chinese body armor routed via Turkey and the United Arab Emirates in late 2022. Chinese companies such as DJI and Xinxing Guangzhou Import and Export Co. were involved. China's an expert at moving things around through complex, under-the-radar methods, so this shouldn't be a surprise. You know how annoying it is when Amazon tells you to pick up your package at one of their lockers? Be lucky China didn't ship it to you, because then you'd practically need a treasure map. In response to the story, China, of course, denies that it has ever provided weapons to either side of the conflict. White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said he can't confirm the story and echoed the statement that the U.S. hasn't seen China provide lethal assistance. What does that mean? Who knows? But one thing is for certain. China is helping Russia, which says a lot about how fair China is likely to be to Ukraine. Ukraine knows this, of course, which is why it's hoping to discourage China from helping Russia even more. They know they need China to play peacemaker 
about as much as their diabetic hamster needs more fried Oreos. So what do you think of China playing peacemaker in Ukraine? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.